So John, thanks. Thanks for bringing up those those um, issues that definitely pertain to labor and, and working people. Um, so I, I appreciate you bringing those up for discussion. Let's go now to Mike in Brandon. Hi, Mike. You're on the air. Very good. What's on your mind? Back in the day, here come the European settlers. They're on their boat. And as they get to the shore of the, of, of the country or the continent, you have a bunch of uh, Native Americans there. And uh, they uh, flash their badges. They're NAIS, Native American Immigration Services. Um, and, uh, you know, show us the papers and pay the fine. I think what gets lost in the in all this conversation is we stole a freaking country from some people and now now that we are the ones who basically rule it we're preventing other people from coming to this country it makes absolutely no sense that's i i love that you uh, can you turn her mic on i love that you make that point um you know nobody ever wants to talk about the fact that you know when the mayflower uh landed here yes there were already people here it wasn't discovered by you know by this person, it was it was already a land that was, you know. The Native Americans were here. Uh, a lot of the what now we now know as Chicanos or Mexican Americans were already here. You know, when the, the African slaves were brought over, they they were all, all of a sudden, you know, forced to to be a part of this country. So you make very good um, historical points, and I think that it's conveniently left out of the history books. Uh, you know, when children are taught history and, and all about Thanksgiving Day in elementary schools, none, none of this is ever brought up. They make it seem like it was just, you know, everyone hanging out at the lunch table and, and saying, oh, of course we give up our land, of course. Yeah, Ellis Island had some problems too. Um, you know, if, if you you remember correctly, uh, people who were deemed you know unfit to enter the country were left and abandoned, uh, you know, on this island. Uh, but you know, I, I think like throughout the history of the U.S., immigration has always been something that you know the the colonizers who at one point did settle here, uh, they they took very very forceful forceful means to try to make it possible for them to be the ones to flourish. Uh, you know, you still had people trying to immigrate back in like the 30s from Mexico and, and they were met, you know, very forcefully over the border, uh, which was at that time still being created. So, you know. Mike, thanks so much for your call. Let's let them let's let them answer. Thanks so much. What would you say about that? Uh, well, first of all, I'm Chicana. Uh, my parents are the ones who are from Mexico. I, I was born in Florida, and you know, if we remember historically, uh, the southwest of the U.S. was you know taken at force from Mexico. So that's why I'm Chicana. But um, uh, you know, I I agree that there should be some kind of reparations. But who would we be demanding it from? You know, there's a lot of people here who are who are at fault for the fact that Mexico is currently repressed. Um, but, you know, the conquistadors themselves, they were European and they, they were on a mission to make sure that, you know, religion, or they used the excuse of religion to try to colonize, uh, you know, what is now known as South America and Mexico. So, you know, we're, we're still, we're still very, uh, that's very much in our minds whenever we do organize, but I think with, with what we have presently and in front of us is the system that's trying to continue repressing the undocumented and by effect, you know, people like myself, like a Chicano who's, you know, a U.S. citizen, do have to, you know, suffer the consequences for people thinking that someone who's undocumented is stealing everything from, from people who are poor, you know, just like you and I. So, um, yeah. 
All right, thanks so much for that call. Uh, you're listening to the voice of Marisol Marquez and Gage LaCharity. They're with Raices in Tampa and Tampa Bay SDS. And we're talking today about May Day or International Workers' Day. They have a celebration on Friday in Ybor City. And this is the Midpoint Program. My name is Sean Canan. It's 1240 in the afternoon, and we'd like to hear from you. The number to call is 813-239-9663. You can text us to 813-433-0885 or email us at dj at wmnf.org. Uh, we have Stephen on the line in St. Petersburg. Hi, Stephen. What's up? Thanks for that call, Stephen. That's that's a good question. Um, well, yeah, definitely. If you're you know if you're Mexicano, Central American, and you cross the border, that's the moment that you become undocumented. Uh, again, people who are coming from these countries on the on the beast, you know, which is the train that go, goes through Central America into the U.S. Uh, they're they're terrible conditions. But once you set foot on on this land, it's not like for for a Cuban who's you know taking the the boat and coming into Florida. When, once they set foot on here, you know, one foot on dry land, they're, they're immediately handed uh, citizenship. You know, every, every time we talk about immigrants, we never remember that, you know, Cubans are granted citizenship the moment they walk in, and it's, it's very much uh, having to do with their political uh, representation in Cuba. They're a socialist country. Uh, in Mexico, they're not socialist. They're actually a puppet of the U.S., and uh, we can't set shop uh, up there if we, if we want to. Uh, and if somebody wants to go in and buy this land from you know a very poor person in Mexico, you can. Uh, and there is no, in, in no way, the same kind of uh, measures that the U.S. takes on other countries coming from people in Central America or Mexico. Uh, if we remember, if we rem remember history very well, uh, countries like Honduras that have a much more or had a much more progressive government, uh, you know, they were they were set up in a coup against their own government by the U.S. So uh, we have to remember that these facts make it very, very possible for the U.S. to be able to do what it does and to pin us against people like those who are from Mexico or Central America. Some of the people who are undocumented immigrants uh, cross the border without any kind of documentation whatsoever, but also a lot of people get a visa and then get a job or, or whatever, and they overstay their visas, and now they become undocumented, but they did have I guess, official U.S. government permission at first to, to yeah. Ar arrive. Yeah, I'm really glad you bring that up, Sean, because, um, you know, with Raices in Tampa being a part of a broad broader network called Legalization for All, we are pretty much, uh, in a way, opposed to these temporary visas. Uh, what, what it does is it, it dangles this, you know, promise to people in Central America or Mexico and says, come into the U.S., we'll have you work, we'll give you this visa, you'll be here for 11 months, and... Once those 11 months are over, you better come over here and report back and we'll deport you back and, you know, you can get a job if you want. Never do, do uh, the people actually get told that when they're in the U.S. they're just going to be overworked, they're not going to be given overtime pay, they're not going to be given health care. If they get hurt, God forbid, uh, you know, working in these terrible conditions, then they're going to be expected to suck it up and never complain about it, you know. And uh, all the while, this is a very uh, recyclable labor, it's very cheap. It's very cost effective for the U.S. and that's why they get away with doing it. Tell me about your hashtag. Ha oh, so so it's hashtag not the number one more deportation. Yeah, that's uh, that's something that came uh, into effect by the National Day Labor Organization. Uh, Endilon is what we call them. Uh, they're a, they're an amazing nonprofit from the southwest of, of the United States, and they organize with uh, you know a lot of people who are trying to help the undocumented. They organize with the undocumented. A lot of them are undocumented, and you know we, we love the hashtag not one more. Uh, it's it's definitely something that's been claimed by by the undocumented themselves. Uh, just like when Obama tried to use you know the the Chicano terms, he said puede or yes we can in his presidential campaign, which frankly is a slap in the face considering that he's re deported uh, you know a record high amount of deport of immigrants. I mean, 
you know, not one more is something else that's come out of this movement for, for equality for the undocumented. You're, t you're talking about the uh, record number of deportations. Uh, there was a time in the mid-2000s where there were more and more people crossing the border from Mexico into the U.S. What's happened to the rate of, of um, migration into the U.S. Since, since like seven or eight years ago? Yeah, uh, if we remember again, uh, I keep mentioning what happened in Honduras uh, under Hillary Clinton. You know, she was the Secretary of uh, State. Uh, there was a coup in Honduras that happened in 2008, and uh, you know, that's these things do continue to happen. Uh, people's very progressive governments down in the south part of America. Uh, you know, the, these are the same people who are organizing very much for their people. Uh, countries like Venezuela, who had you know. Uh, Hugo Chavez, who you know now recently passed away, he had a very progressive idea in mind. Countries like Cuba, who are you know socialists, they also have uh, huge May Day protests. They they organize for the people, and millions of them come out. Uh, you know the, these are waves that happen, and they very much have to do with uh, the U.S. and the way that it attacks other countries. And since the U.S. economy crashed in 2007, 2008 or so, uh, there's been a fewer people coming across the border, is that true? I would say um, no, <laughs> in a way they have not. We, we recently saw the refugee children, right, that are uh, flooding the, the gates of uh, or the Honduras deportation centers. Uh, I, I frankly think that it's something that's gonna continue to happen as long as we keep invading other countries. The number to call is 813-239-9663. You can also email us at dj at wmnf.org. We have Nermeen in Clearwater on the air, hi. All right, thanks for that question. Is there a connection? Do you, can you think of a connection there? I don't think so. <laughs> okay. Well, thanks so much for that call. Let's, let's go to Stephen. I uh, appreciate that call. Nermeen, Stephen, in St. Petersburg, what do you have on your mind? Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Stephen. I would I would love to address uh, what you bring up, Stephen. Um, I'm actually you know the, again the daughter of undocumented Mexicano immigrants. Uh, I worked in the fields with them since I could. You know um, that's around the age of six and the age of eight. I was working in the fields with them. They had no union representation in the farms. Uh, the the working conditions were terrible. You weren't even given a three hour work break. Uh, you weren't given a, a lunch really. You, you had no potable water or, or bathrooms in the workplace. Uh, I, I can honestly tell you that I've only had one year of uh, education under my belt. I'm a union member. I'm an AFSCME uh, 79 local member. My husband is a, a UPS driver and he's a Teamster member. Uh, I, I think the points that you bring up are very, very good though. Uh, I think that unemployment is at a very, very high rate and, and the black uh, people that you re are referring to, yes, they are very severely under uh, underemployed. Uh, and so I, I think that it's time that we organize, right? That's, that's, that's what we're talking about. May Day has been a day where historically workers have gone out into the streets and demanded better working conditions. They've demanded that the unemployment rates go down, that they stop outsourcing these jobs to, to different countries where they can get away with paying people over there a lot cheaper than they do to people here, you know? So 
I, I would say to you, you should join us, you know, because not only is it a good thing for you, it's also a good thing for everyone who's here in the U.S. When we say no to U.S. imperialism, which is what we're talking about, you know, invading other people's countries, I think that people will stop coming into the U.S. because no longer will, will, there be, will their homes be bombed and they can sit, sit at home and try to organize themselves just like we're trying to do here. I'm, I'm not sure what that has to do with, with um, the topics at hand, though, Stephen. I mean, um, do you... Thanks so much. I appreciate your call. All right, let's let's go to um, who's been waiting the longest. How about uh, Rick in Tampa? Hi, Rick. Good afternoon. Migration happens. I think that, you know, um, Rick in Tampa, you're pointing that out. Migration happens. I think that that's something that um, Stephen uh, might be able to agree that, you know, our previous caller, that think people migrate. I mean, you know, we travel and we d might decide to live somewhere else. That's That happens. Migration happens. I guess the question is, um, how do you give people a path to being living where they can get a job and living where they would like to live and where their community accepts them. Yeah, well, uh, you know, our demand as races in Tampa is that legalization for all do is something that happens, you know. Uh, people do still need to have some documentation on them just like we do. You know, the, the social security system is pretty cool. So, you know, why not grant that same system to, to other people who, you know, want to stay here? They shouldn't be forced to be deported. Uh, Wait, did you just, you just said something good about the United States government. I know, I know. <laughs> well, it's just, you know, kind of like a way to identify you, but... Um. <laughs> And it's also, I'm glad you bring that up because it is still a green card, right? It isn't what, what people who immigrate to this country really want. Uh, they, they want something that, like you said, is much more permanent, a way to stay here forever if they so choose. Uh, that, like you said, it's not non-existent at this point. Rick, thanks for that perspective um, from a, someone who has is trying to, I guess, um, to, to be a, a documented immigrant, right? And it's not, as one of the earlier people pointed out, it's not a gift. It's something that is, it's a really hard process if, if you even have the, that ability. So uh, let's go now to Gordon in Tampa. Hi, Gordon. Hi, 